The problem being addressed in my deliverable is the civil unrest in Cuba. The people of Cuba are at a lack of financial and social stability due to factors which affect their lives, such as natural disasters and the strict government control held over the people's political rights and economic stability. These issues cause both physiological and psychological damage to the people living there. Natural disasters, such as strong hurricanes and intense flooding, cause a great deal of damage in the Caribbean. These natural disasters lead to severe property damage in the affected cities and hurt the economy by halting growth, since resources have to be spent on rebuilding and recovery. Following an event like this, the little money the people had has to be spent on fixing their property. Natural disasters cause a great disturbance in the population of those countries residing in the Caribbean. Studies show that the poorest people are more prone to depression, alcoholism, and even violence during these difficult times. Many people try to salvage what they can from what is left of their broken homes, with the hopes that they can at least have something left to help them survive these hard times. Although nature cannot be controlled, a big reason for the huge impacts they have on the country is because of the lack of resources available to the people. The average working class Cuban lives in a house with multiple problems already. These include lack of heated water, roofing issues such as cracks and leaks, and even outdated appliances. The Cuban government holds a tight grip on the people's freedom of speech in Cuba. Even peaceful protests are met with retaliation by government officials such as the peaceful protests in 2016 against the detainment of government opponents, which led to the detainment of over 50 members of the Ladies and White group. Members of the protest were retained with no word on where they were being taken for the time being. The government also controls majority of businesses in Cuba, which limits income for people living there. Since only 25% of Cubans work in the private sector, the rest are mostly paid by the government. The government pays people in a currency called the Cuban Peso, which has a 24 to 1 ratio of Peso to US dollar. This ratio causes issues to Cuba's growth in the exporting field, while also making it difficult to convert to foreign currency. The Cuban people are not allowed to know much of what is going on in the world or in their own country due to harsh censorship laws. Journalists residing in Cuba would not even report on topics that the government does not agree with. Only about 25% of Cubans have access to the internet, while an even lesser 5% are connected to it at their own homes. Prior attempts on helping Cuba include signed petitions and organizational groups. One organization that has been helping Cuba out for some time now is the CARE organization. They focus on helping people in need from countries all over the world. They have been working in Cuba for the past 15 years and have been attempting to aid the people to finding work and improve living conditions all around. Although online organizations that help countries worldwide are a great source of help, I do not feel there is enough awareness of them to aid the organizations in their causes. Since these organizations work mostly through online sources, it is difficult for people to learn about them. It is also a less personal experience to simply read about what they do compared to physical interaction with a group of people to help them feel the need to help. This project helped promote awareness through the use of local car meets that I attended. During the meets, I gave out information to the attendees on the current situation of the Cuban people's lives. I also directed them towards the CARE organization's website for more information and where they could donate if they wished to help out. The significance of this project to me is the fact that I myself have family living in Cuba right now. My household sums in money and other items like clothing, medicine, and toiletries to help them live an easier life, but even then it can be difficult for them. If people were more inclined to help the country by donating to causes that help the country grow and prosper, eventually the country will be able to provide more for its people and in turn help everyone have a better quality of life in Cuba. The target audience for my proposed project were the local members of the car meet community here in South Florida. The reason for this was because of the car community being such a large group where information could potentially spread to many people. Some of the people that come to the local car meets drive miles away just to meet up with different groups and to talk about their cars and shared experiences. The people who come to these meets spend hours of their time at a time and a lot of their money trying to customize their cars to their liking. When things go wrong, parts must be replaced at a larger and laborious expense. Knowing this, I felt the people at these meets could relate to the hardworking people of Cuba. For the people of Cuba, instead of their cars, it is the rundown homes and little they have just to get by. Just like with a car, when something in the home breaks, it will need repairs. Repairs cost a lot of money which usually neither the Cuban people nor my target audience have at hand all the time. In this way, they can relate to the hard work it will take to fix up something precious in their lives. 
This project was a short-term deliverable where I went out for a night to meet with a small group at the local car meet. I went around giving a summary of my project and the details about it to the members. The reason for my attendance was to simply raise awareness on the civil unrest that is currently happening in Cuba. The more people informed on the topic, the better the chances of changing it in the future. The goal of my project was to promote awareness on the civil unrest in Cuba to the community and to promote donating to causes that help the country grow from their economic and environmental limitations. The donations would go specifically to the care organizations, which I had mentioned earlier, who have been helping Cuba for 15 years now. The way I measured the success of my project was basically the amount of people I was able to spread word to. Obtaining emails to send links for more information or donations was simply a bonus for me, although I would have liked to have gotten more. This could have been because I was not well connected with the members of the meet myself. This project helped create a more formal and direct form of awareness toward helping out my cause. Unlike online sources, a physical and direct approach of informing the public will better inform and encourage them to spread the word and even donate to a group that is actively helping out the country of Cuba. This project is unique because it targets a different group that has never been targeted before, the car enthusiast. It is a very diverse community where people of many backgrounds come together to discuss and appreciate everyone's project of the unique build of cars. Since there are many people coming together, it offers a wider target audience. In South Florida, many people's ethnic background is Hispanic, but there are many more backgrounds that are present as well. Considering most people in South Florida are from Cuban descent, the target of my project has a more personal feel to the majority of the people I encounter. This could lead to a more positive outcome in the future if I ever decide to continue with the project.